UN Human Rights Council is set to examine a report it commissioned that accuses both Israel and Hamas militants of war crimes during the Gaza war, which began in December. Human rights groups say the report is the result of one of the most balanced and constructive investigations into conflict. More than a thousand Palestinians and 13 Israelis were killed. Many were civilians. Artis Paulus Lear met with Israeli refugees from Gaza who say they still have to hide from Hamas missile attacks. In most parts of the world, this is simply a sewer pipe. But in Israel, it's used for something completely different. When an air raid goes off, Rachel Sapperstein has 10 seconds to get from her house to the concrete slab, which becomes her shelter. We feel like refugees. When we left, there were maybe perhaps 200 houses that were built in this area here to absorb 1,000 uh, 300 families. Of course, this, this would never take a direct hit by one of those uh, rockets, but it would protect us from shrapnel if a bomb did fall uh, close by. Rachel is one of 8,000 Israeli settlers evacuated from Gaza just over four years ago. A museum set up in the heart of Jerusalem captures their anguish. Then Prime Minister Ariel Sharon made the decision for Israel to move its citizens and army out of Gaza after 38 years of living there. But the move was controversial. While most Israelis supported it as a step towards peace, the Gaza settlers felt betrayed. Four years on, and many of the refugees are still living in temporary shelters like these makeshift houses, which accommodate 500 families. They can't afford to leave. Most of them don't have money for new mortgages and can't find work. Every 100 meters is another pipe like this, with strong graffiti against the Israeli government. Accusations like you threw us to the gutter, and warnings that we told you so, with reference to this year's war in Gaza. When the refugees were brought into Israel proper, the missiles followed them. During the Gaza war in January, rockets rained down on their new shelters. Renan Gissen admits in some ways the government failed to rehabilitate them. He was Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's advisor at the time, and he says the sewer pipes, like everything else the Israeli government did then, were a practical solution to an urgent problem. These missiles are very crude missiles. You know, they could uh, explode or they could fall on your head and they could kill you. So in terms of uh, being able to minimize collateral damage and, and, and giving people some sense of protection before they had the shelter, that was a, that was a practical solution at the time. Peace activists believe the settlers are taking advantage of the situation, convinced of a conspiracy between them and the Sharon government. They had an implicit common interest, and the implicit common interest was to show how difficult and how painful and how unsuccessful it is to remove settlers, so that to create, to create a barrier for removal of settlers from the West Bank. Shlomo Bashan can't bring himself to live in Itzan or any of the other temporary shelters built for the Gaza refugees. He felt so depressed and lost after being evacuated that he even left the country for a while. Now he finds comfort in telling his story. That was very difficult uh, for most of the people from Gush Katif. They didn't like the idea to make a museum of their story. But the people who decided to build this museum uh, understood that the story of Gush Katif uh, have to be remembered uh, forever. But the refugees from Gaza will never forget. Wherever they look, the bomb shelters are there to remind them. Paulus Lea, RT, Nitzan.